Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hormone Helper Podcast. I'm Coach Andrew, your hormone helper from Fit for All Fitness. I personally coach over 1,600 men and women to help better understand their hormones so they can lose weight and get their metabolism back on track. With this podcast, you're going to hear from me and my special guests about everything from metabolism to thyroid to weight loss. And we even talk a little bit of sexy time as we chat to spread more knowledge thick like butter on your hormones. If you're ready to learn, I'm ready to share. So let's do this. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Getting Real with the Costas. Yay! It is episode 17. Did you know that? So we are currently in our car right now, and we are planning to do this for the first time. In fact, the reason why we actually started Getting Real with the Costas was because Andrew and I had just always had such good conversations in our car. Um, To head back to our parents, it's always like an hour or an hour and a half. And we just have like some really awesome conversations. So we figured we have an hour drive. We're heading back home to Andrew's parents for Thanksgiving. And we figured... Turkey. Yeah, that makes us tired. Actually, it doesn't make me tired. Or does Uh, it? I don't know. I haven't had turkey in a while. No, because I'm talking. (laughs) Um... I don't know. Turkey never made me tired at, at all. I will say that that when I eat a lot of carbs, like in one shot, but that has always been a, a, a thing for me, right? And that's actually kind of normal for people, right? I think when they when they have a higher amount of blood sugar, then they just go to sleep. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what are we going to talk about today? Um. So this is a great question. By the way, we're hoping yeah. that this shit works because <laughs> we've never done this before. And we hope that it's, it says it's recording. So I think we're all good. And, um, I just hope that I can actually send it to myself and it will be awesome. We're just going to see if not, then this may be uh, an official round two, right? Um, I think we had a a starting of a good conversation last night, which I was like, no, let's not actually fully go into this and let's talk about it today. Um, really about the aspect of, of people thinking that they can, uh, do things alone or about kind of putting your I guess like what's the best I don't know I feel like yesterday we like there was like one or two words which really described what what is the word that I'm looking for like I I guess not commitment it's not commitment it's not like like there are okay let, let me lead with the scenario and maybe you guys listening will know what the heck i'm talking about right but me and lorna found ourselves in in this place where we were uh, overviewing a, a couple pieces of our business and um it was it was crazy because like sometimes you think when you start something you think to yourself you know what i don't need anybody's help I know how to do it. I can probably make more money doing it by myself. I can probably see better results just doing it on my own. And I'm just going to push through it. And on the surface, it looks really easy to do. So like, I've got this. And then as you start actually deep diving into it and you start peeling back the layers, you're like, oh, wow, this is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. This is way harder than I thought it was going to be. And at the same time, it's going to take longer and probably to be twice as much money, which is where we kind of found ourselves with a few uh, decisions in our business. Yeah. So to give you guys an example, um, some of you guys might know, some of you guys might not know, um, but we actually own a supplement company called Clean Basics with an X. And we started this company, it was what, 2019, 2020? Yeah. I think 2020. Yeah, 2020. And we essentially, because many of you guys know we had a fitness studio. And at the time, our clients were always asking us, like, what supplement should we take? And so we partnered up with this another company, and we basically just got like, a commission off of it. And that worked, but we were like, you know, we also want to try to make it more effective as well too. And like, how can we be able to make the most out of it? Right. So we decided like, why not create our own products? Because also we wanted products that were all natural. We were very like particular. We didn't want to be like, you know, recommending products to our clients, um, that we weren't using ourselves or like, you know, they had all a bunch of like fillers and and crap in it. Right. So I think the other thing too with that 
was not just the products. I know I love you. You were you were in a in a group, but it it wasn't also just the product. It was the fact too that we saw how much money that they were bringing in, and we were like, we could do that too, and actually provide almost a better product with it. Yeah. So we wanted obviously to have really like organic, all natural products for our clients. Um, but then also like, yeah, of course, like if we were recommending products to, you know, our clients and things like that, we were basically giving so much money to, you know, another company and, you know, I get it. Like the, they obviously have to do the fulfillment and everything like that, but we were like, let's, let's do this on our own type of thing. Right. So we did that. And like, you don't realize like how much goes into like a business, right? Like, it's not just like, Oh, here guys, like here's the website, like purchase. We needed to, we, you needed to set up the, all the back end stuff. Like then it was like, you know, if, if a client didn't get their, their product, then you have to like, you know, figure you have to hop on the call and you have to like figure all that stuff out. So like, I think a lot of the times it's easy to be like, I don't need help from anyone else. Like I can just do things myself. And while that's all great, like you sometimes also have to be realistic as well too. Right. And like understand what, like what comes with it. I think on the surface level, when we were looking at this, to me, what I had done in terms of my research was like, okay, we know where to get the ingredients because as health professionals, you know where to find good quality stuff. We knew how to be able to package and ship the stuff, but it was all of the unknown stuff that really started to add up in terms of time. And then also in combination with like the challenges that we're facing now, right? So originally, like first thing that we had an obstacle with was like the FDA, where they were like, hey, like you can't just throw something in a tub and sell it to people everywhere. Like it has to meet certain standards. And you know, I had to sit down with them and make sure that our labels were, were FDA approved and that our products were FDA approved and that um, we, you know, had the ingredients right and the percentages right and that had to pass. And then once you pass that, then you start looking at the bottles. But it's not just, you know, what is the product going to come in, but also like, is it, is it going to be able to make it there? So you got to have a strong enough bottle that's going to be able to survive shipping, but not something too thick that it's going to cost a lot of money because then you're going to make a product more expensive. And all of that stuff was not something that we had originally signed up for. Like when we were like, we want this as a part of our brand in our business, that wasn't the stuff that I had envisioned doing every single day. But I think that's like anything, like even our businesses, right? So, you know, you guys know I'm a binge eating coach. Andrew's a hormone coach. And we started coaching people because we wanted to coach people, right? We started this business because we wanted to help people. We wanted to to coach people. And there's that. But then it's not just like get on a call and coach somebody. Like we have to be like I'm doing social media every single day. Like I thank God I love it. Like Andrew's not the biggest Andrew freaking hates it but like we didn't sign up necessarily like like we started coaching because we love the coaching aspect but there's so many other things that go into it like I needed to get really good at like TikTok and like filming videos and like my communication my like marketing how to like market your services market your products I needed to get good at like even graphic designs like it's like I didn't sign up for this you know what I mean but it's like there's so many other things that, that get in, get involved. Um, but yeah, but, but even the aspect of coaching, if you think about it, right there, like besides the stuff that you just mentioned, like a lot of times, whether it's coaching or even like you go to school for something, they teach you how to do the specific thing. But in truth, every other thing that you do in life involves so many other skills that nine times out of 10 aren't really taught to you, right? Like, even if you become a lawyer, like you still have to like find people to work with, find jobs, go to firms, get hired. There's so much stuff that on the surface level is just like, oh great, I know, I know the meat and potatoes. Like I know the legal work, you know? And just like for me and Lorna with, with our supplements, like we, we know supplements. Like as, as health professionals, like I know what good quality ingredients look like. I know what the product should look like. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm equipped to be able to do an entire supplement company in business alone, right? And then as we started 
building that, which was uh, okay for a, a couple of years, we started facing new challenges, challenges which now we're looking at, you know, how, how do we overcome these things? And it's really hard for us to do this by, by ourselves. Like shipping has skyrocketed through the roof and I don't know if there, that's something that we can fix. And also we need to look at, you know, our product in the market versus someone else's. Like, you know, if we're selling protein for, you know, 75 bucks when someone buys it at Walmart for $40, does that still make sense? Does it make sense for the client? Does it make sense for us? And a lot of unknown questions come up, which really could have been answered or, you know, I I think, and where our conversation was going last night was like, I always ask myself two things, right? Like, number one is, is this detracting us from what our, what our goals and our objectives are right now? That's, that's a big question. And then the second thing is, is, is there a better way to do this that involves less time? Because we can't focus time on everything. Like we only have so many hours in the day. And I think that's where, you know, it was really like challenging for me because like, you know, sometimes it's like I would feel guilty about not putting in like time or energy into the supplement company but like my focus is on my my clients like my focus is on you know my social media and like like that particular business and like I know how to do social media like I could easily do our supplement um our supplement social media but the way that I saw it was like if I'm putting in time and effort into our supplement um, social media, like that's taking away time that I could potentially be doing more content into, you know, my, like my, my main business, you know? And like, you know, at one point we did have, we hired somebody to do our social media for us for the supplement company, but we're like, is that really worth it? Like, and there's just so many things to consider. Um, but I think what's really important with this conversation is like, like, don't be afraid to like get additional support or like don't be afraid to like like don't have this like high ego of like I need to do everything myself type of thing you know yeah because realistically you can't not not only can you not do everything on your own and this is this is something that like it was super super valuable to me and I forget who said who 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 said this but I learned it from uh uh, from kind of a, a group a networking group um was you can have a hundred percent of one thing or you could have 20 percent of 10 things and a lot of times people are like well if I have 20 percent of 10 things with other people like how much can that grow or how much can that actually do but it's like when you start giving people responsibilities when you start saying openly like I don't know this so you know what I'm going to hire someone to help me or I don't have the expertise so I'm going to work with someone on this it expedites your process and it also takes a layer of burden from you because now you have someone in your corner like one of the hardest parts about the supplements is every decision we've made has always taken a lot of time because there's uncertainty because we've never done it before like truthfully we don't know what we're doing we don't have access we don't have con- uh, contacts we don't we've never done this before so when we're making decisions we're not making decisions from experience we're making decisions really out of like okay what do we not want to happen whereas if we had worked with a professional on this who knows maybe a professional would have said actually uh, starting a company is not a good idea in supplements or maybe the professional would have steered us in a way that maybe we didn't have 20 products like we have now and maybe it's only four or five products that we can control and and really have a a great amount of access to so you know we you you live and you learn for sure and there's definitely no looking back but what's really important from a support perspective is is like when you have someone in your corner that's helping you, whether it's teaching you the tools or giving you the experience to walk through, hey, this is what the challenge is, or I've encountered that before, like, that's truly why me and Lorna now, like, we've started spending more and more of our time focusing on what we do and delegating to someone else 
like what we don't do or what someone can do faster or or better you know and that includes like getting support like you know Lauren has worked with people to be able to get your TikTok as as far as it was and and learn the the ins and outs and well your your coach right like help you with the marketing aspect of it right and um and she by the way my coach did not help me with TikTok (laughs) I am just the queen of TikTok no like I I work with I, mean, I work I, with a coach, right, that obviously talks about, like, marketing and, like, getting your message across, yeah, but... So, I mean, technically, because you marketed better, you you got more I think it's TikTok. all me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why... She, I'm just taking all the credit. Like, no, I just... About? I'm just really good on TikTok. Like, anyone listening can attest to it. Like, well, I... also from things that you've learned. Of course. And right? that's why like, I hire coaches, right? Uh, oh, 100%. Right? But, like, <laughs> that, 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 I don't... What on earth? True. Okay, you just fine. so yes. 180 that? What on earth? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I love it, right? And, um, and you know, it's funny because typically I'm the one who's resilient to... And I'll be open with it. I'm, I'm the resilient guy. I'm the one who's skeptical about about working with someone or about finding the right person, you know? But at the end of the day, like, I have I think both of us have, have always, like, gone both feet in when it's time to work with somebody or make that decision, right? Well, I think coming full circle into, like, this whole conversation of, like, like, it is okay to reach out for support. Like, you and I have always invested in support in coaching and getting support when we don't know what we're doing yeah. you know and like I think sometimes people think like oh like I oh I'm weak or like I'm broken or like I can try to figure it out on myself so I don't need help and like sometimes there are things that I, we could do ourselves but like it's just so much more efficient so for example I actually have a VA in my business and everything that she does I literally could do It's not like it's rocket science, right? But it's like, it's going to save me time. It's going to save me energy, right? And even when it comes to like health coaching and things like that, right? It's like getting support to like, sure, you might be able to like do things on your own, right? But it's like having that accountability. It's having that support. It's also having the efficient tools of like not having to like try to like think of like, oh, like, you know, what do I do today? Or like, how do I eat during the holidays or like whatever it is? It's just like, here's the blueprint. Like here it is step by step. Right. I think what it comes down to is like, and my dad always says this all the time, do it right the first time. Don't do it once and then you got to fix it and then you got to go back or you're, you're doing this journey over and over again and you're spending multiple years like it's gonna it's gonna take more time it's gonna be more heartache it's gonna cost you more money and that doesn't make sense and sometimes a, a lot of us you know like I remember initially when we were uh, hiring coaches like when we first opened the studio right I know initially the first thing for me was the fear of the finances where I was looking at it and I was like, whoa, this is the most amount of money I've ever spent on myself. And I really don't know what's going to come of it. But I'm hiring someone who's more experienced and I trust in the process that what is going to come is only going to be good because these skills are with me for life. But I also think like we trust ourselves, right? And I think that's very important. Like when you are getting support from somebody it's you also have to trust yourself it's not like putting this coach on a pedestal and be like I'm gonna get support they better fix me they better give me results tomorrow it's like we've always gotten really good results when hiring coaches because we trust ourselves to watch the trainings to implement to actually utilize the tools it's like you know help is available to like expedite the process but that's not an excuse of like I'm just gonna lay back put my feet up on the couch and like just not do anything Right. And, and I think that's where, you know, the second part and, and this is like where I was kind of going with the, you know, initially, right, like first coaches we've ever worked with, that's what crossed my mind. And then as we started working with more and more coaches, I don't even know how, how many coaches you think we've worked with Lots. or people like Lots. Lots. I don't know. <laughs> just just a, well, no, like a, a lot of people like i mean i well i i can count things, right? well for different things right but in total i mean i think there's what five on my end yeah, i don't know i don't feel like counting but uh yeah so <laughs> <laughs> learn is not the numbers person i'm the numbers person so. as soon as it goes to numbers and logic i'm like nope but but yeah so like the as as 
like as I started working with more and more people, my the way that I actually worked with coaches started to actually change where I wanted like I really value for example proximity. Like I I value having people like really close to me where I can answer or ask a question and know that like I'm going to get get an answer when I need it, right? And that being said, like it's not like I, I ask 50 million questions a week, but that burning question is like I value proximity and I also value the experience of someone else. Like even just being able to say, "Hey, here's how I'm feeling." And the coach being able to be like, "Oh, that's totally normal. Other people yeah. have felt this way." Or, "You know what? You might want to consider this." That's hugely valuable to me. Yeah. So, I started working with more and more people after that first one, not no longer being scared of the finances because I was recognized that like the experience is really priceless because we have, you know, uh, unlike the supplements, we've been able to avoid some really crazy mistakes because we've worked with really good people who have been in our corner and who have been able to kind of keep us on the right track and also help us when we do have sticking points whether it's mental or or emotional sticking points be able to you know give us that support where where it's needed right i think also something to talk about as well too is like getting support even when things are going fine you know like you know what I mean? It's like, you know, things are going great in my business and I just hired another business coach, right? Because like I want things to be even better, right? So I think that's also something as well too. It's like you also don't need support when like things are going bad necessarily. It's like you want things to be like okay to like I want things to be even better, right? Or like good to great, you know? Right. I think that's also there's that too. Yeah, and this is where like the... um which I think is a really real example, like hiring someone out of like desperation to like fix something immediately never, never, ever works out. And like one of the, the, you know, first coaches that we had hired at the facility, actually not, not even a coach. Do you remember the first employee we hired? Do you? Yeah. So, (laughs) So, uh, and we will, we will discard names for, for sake of. This was all Andrew. This was all me, but basically we were, we were to the gills busy and I hired someone out of reaction. I hired someone because I was like, you know what? We need support. This person can, can provide support. And I put, I, I put them into a role with really, really high level expectations that they would offboard all this stuff because I was doing it in a, in a term of desperation just to kind of get some stuff off my plate. Uh, it did not go well. The person was not a good fit. We ended up having to let that person go. And at the same time, it then cost me double the time and took me more work all because when I hired this person, you know, similar to working with a coach, I wasn't in the right state of mind to work with that person. I agree a hundred percent with you that working with anybody, you don't like do something like, Oh, I'm, I'm so desperate to see a change. Like you want to be excited about the process. You want to be able to have the time to take the tools. You need to be able to have the patience to be able to do that. And if you don't, then expectations on both sides won't match. And that's where a lot of people might be really frustrated through their health journey or their health process yeah and like we said it's like so important doing things right the first time like there's so many clients that you know come to us and they're like you know i work with a nutritionist i work with a naturopath i work with you know this person and we and then it's like then they like they're like okay i'm ready for a sustainable solution and then they usually come to us right so it's like you know i think it's like really important to like do your research and, and finding something that this is kind of off topic, but like finding something that is really sustainable so that you don't have to go through, you know, it's like doing things right the first time, you know, it's like, even when it comes to like paying coaches, it's like, you know, you can pay cheap and get cheap or you can pay, you know, a good amount of money and like get that sustainable solution and, and be good for like, you know, like the rest of your life, you know, like it's, it's all about that. Since we're in the off topic state, what do you define as what is your definition of cheap? Like everyone has a different dollar value and that's not what I'm talking about, right? Like, like, okay. So what I mean by cheap, what I mean by cheap is 
yeah okay so what I mean by cheap is like let's say you know that you want to hire a coach right you want to work with a coach right but you're like oh but like this naturopath or whatever like it's covered by like my insurance so like and like I'm all for that like I mean if you have benefits and things like that like totally but at the same time it's like you know if if something is just like oh I'm gonna like this is covered by my my insurance so like I'm just gonna go to it but like it's not really helping like the amount of people that come to me they're like yeah I go to therapy because it's like it's it's cheaper but they're, they're like I honestly like I, it's not even helping they're like you, just listening to you makes me feel so much so much more seen and understood so for me it's like you're doing yourself a disservice even though it's quote-unquote cheap right it's like it's actually costing you more because you're spending way more time way more energy and you're almost like at the same place that's what I mean by cheap right so for example when I was hiring a coach and I hired that coach for it was like forty three thousand dollars for two months of coaching I could have hired somebody for way 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 less but it's not the person that I wanted. So I could have hired somebody like one of her clients that would maybe be like, you know, 5k a month or $4,000 a month or whatever, but it wasn't what I actually wanted. So that's what I mean by cheap. It's not only just like the finances. It's not even just like, oh, this person's cheaper than this person, but it's like if you know that you want to hire this person, work with that person. Don't hire this person because they're less expensive it's like who do you actually want to work with that that's what i mean does that make sense yeah for you know it's interesting because we have we have different you know and this might surprise you but for me cheapness i feel cheapness in my gut on two levels okay cheapness where when you hear what someone is offering versus what it costs you and this could be cost in time cost in money where you go, it's too good to be true, that's cheap. Yes, this, yes, this, yes. If yes. you're like, it, it's too good to be true, you know deep down in the pit of your stomach, I, I am either, either something is not right up front or it's, it's too good to be true. Okay, that's, that's the, uh, the number one, okay? Number two, the thing that's cheap for me is when you can do it and not blink an eye and not care. If you don't yeah. have any emotional attachment. Damn, you're so good. Like, I resonate with all of these. So, thank you. Yeah, like it's, you know, because I, I've done things in the past that like, again, someone, you know, puts a price tag to or someone says something or like, here's a great example. You remember the blinds in the house? Oh my gosh, There was yes. this guy, okay, who we bought our house and we wanted blinds for our house. And... We, we needed blinds. Like, we needed blinds. Everyone could see every aspect. I'm sure they saw my ass a few times. Like we Well, you would literally go in the window butt naked. Like, what do you expect? Well, we needed blinds. So, anyways, <laughs> it's safe to say, like, it, it was a need. Like, we were, like, that guy was coming over, not for us to, like, decide, but for us to, like, buy the blinds, okay? And every at every single opportunity, this guy was like, you don't want to look at those colors because they're probably too expensive and you don't want to do this because that's too expensive. And the first thing for me when, when, when I was looking is I was actually almost offended. I was like, you really think that I don't value this that much that like, I don't want any of those things that I don't want the best of the best. There was these one blinds where literally, I think it's like automatic ones, right? Where we didn't have to manually do it ourselves. And we were like, we were honestly like, we were like all for that. And then he's like, oh no, like those are going to be too much. It was like $50. And we're like, we would have literally not even a bad an eye. Yep. Like, uh, like even if it was like, you know, 150, 200, whatever. It's like. Yeah, an extra it, 50 bucks. Yeah. But because, you know, he was like, oh, like, yeah, it's, it's you know these are like it's it's you know this is the cheaper option like this is the better option we're like uh like it was almost like a turnoff we're like but we want the higher level thing like you know so I think like you said when it, like somebody is giving you a package and you're like wait I get all of this for literally so cheap like uh, I don't know like it's like I I would want to pay more yeah you know like 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 for example go search prom dress for Amazon under 97 bucks that's too cheap you know what I mean? Like, wait, did like, you did you search this? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I'm just like throwing off the top of my head, right? Like, I just like a prom dress is not going to be cheap. 
okay? And if you're like, oh, boom, I want one for 97 bucks, you're you're not going to value it and you're probably not going to care the condition that it's in because you know that you didn't you didn't pay the value of what would be worth anything, right? But see, like, this is why when so we moved into a new build and people would say like, "Oh, try to get like furniture like elsewhere." Like I wanted everything ban- bang bang spanking new. <laughs> oh, yeah, bang spanking. Whoa. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Brand spanking new. Yeah, bang spanking. I, oh, I love that. Yeah. I wanted everything bang. Brand, no, brand spanking new. Brand spanking new, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, I don't know, for me, it's like even when we're looking for like uh, a table. So we were looking for a table, okay, for our kitchen table. And you can go on like Facebook Marketplace and all the things. And like, I don't know, for me, I'm just like, I don't want to pay. Like, even if it's like a hundred bucks, I'm like, no, like, I feel like that's too cheap. Like, and, and I like, I just wanted something like, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like, oh, we have millions of dollars. We can just buy whatever we want, but it's just like the, like it's, it's the concept, right? So I'm like, no, I actually want to go to a store and, and like pick it up myself and like, have it brand spanking new like there's just something about that I'm like I want that you know like, I don't want this cheap ass freaking table that's gonna like break in like two days like I'm not about that and even like I was um going through my closet and I have so many clothes and like you know you know Andrew was like well why don't you sell them right and like I tried but like honestly I'm like it's it's not like it's literally more worth my time to try to go on Facebook Marketplace to respond to these people, I'm like, I would rather just freaking donate it. Like, that's just, I don't know. It's just the way that I am, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah. But, but I'm glad that the, 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 the cheap feeling is, so, like, just like there's a cheap feeling, I also feel like there's something called a cheap mindset. Have you ever, have you ever, like, if you, if you look back at conversations you've had in the past, have you ever seen a cheapness in mindset? Like in somebody that we knew? Yeah. So like, for example, like for me, right. And this is why I wanted your definition of cheap, right? For me, when someone has a cheap mindset, it's people who do not value themselves enough to make any type of a decision or an action. Like, like one thing that is really transformed with us for, for coaches is we have like a high value mindset where like, you know, and, and it's not that again, we, we like expensive things, but like like you and I spend a lot of time on ourselves. We spend a lot of, of money on ourselves. We spend a lot of resources on our on ourselves. And I think that in our growth, whether it's education, whether it's from a health perspective, you know, and we had even discussed the the, the MedCan thing and stuff. Like in looking at all that stuff, it's because we literally value, like we have a higher value set for ourselves. And that also being said, our high value mindset, we also value other people a lot more, yeah. right? Where when someone goes and we like choose to work with them, like truthfully, I don't want a discount. I don't want a discount from people that I work with. I also don't want like a best friend's discount for being a friend. Like no, I want to yeah. honor my friend by paying the price that he charges everybody else, yeah. right? Like that's the type of, you know, I'm valuing that and even valuing, for example, like relationships and trust. Like I, when, when we build a friendship with someone, I value that friendship so much. They get my trust up front. I'm not like, Ooh, I should be leery or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll only half share with them. Like I want to be able to go all in and put that trust up front to show that I value them because when just like I value myself and my value for me is up front, it's really the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, for sure. When you value yourself, like I always say, like, you know, like, like, yeah, we do value ourselves a lot. And that's why like we, you know, when we invest in coaches or whatever, it's like, we've always been somebody to, to see the value in us, the value in other people, the value in the service. So it's, it's really just been like a no brainer. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, even like side note, this is kind of all over the place, but like even in Greece, when we went to Greece, um, like there, so one day we somehow ended up in like this, 
like uh, what would you say like the touristy part like the city where like all like the food and stuff was uh i mean the, all where the boats got off is that what you're yeah. talking about we ended up going to like this place and it was like a bunch of just like like places where you can eat for like very very very, very cheap right and here we were like we were eating like on our strip of where we stayed and like every meal was like two hundred dollars one we had was like three hundred dollars like every single night right but we vowed like we could have easily been like oh let's just go to the um let's just go to these other places and like purchase something quick but like there's no view there's no sit down meal like it's just very like quick and easy right it, it lacks experience it lacked the culture that which is ultimately what we went there for and like if i want to go buy a chicken kebab like i can go buy a chicken kebab in toronto for like 10 bucks like i don't need to travel across the globe to pick up a, a chicken kebab for 10 euros yeah so you know we I mean? we were like okay well what do we value we value like good service right we value like really good food like oh my gosh the food in Greece was so good but because we went to like these restaurants like the high quality places right we valued also the view like literally we're like sitting down at dinner and like this one one night it was literally just like us for like the longest time probably like 30 minutes the entire time that we had our meal um it was literally just us and like us in the restaurant outside with this beautiful view we got like blankets because it was like so cold we got like heaters being brought to us like the place that we spent three hundred dollars we literally had the best view we had blank they gave us like blankets they gave us a heater like multiple heaters like right beside us and it was like such good quality experience right so like that's also like you just pay for what you get oh absolutely right and and i think you know the the purpose and the reason why we we share this is like you know i'm me and lorna right now are learning a very big lesson with this with this supplement company right and we we made a lot of mistakes and although the product is good if we were to take a you know we sat down we had a large con uh, a long conversation yesterday which is kind of where this all all came from you know like it sometimes someone's tried and true solution someone's you know filtered experience that's already like has what you need is better than you trying to reinvent the wheel or recreate something just for the sake of ego where it's like but it's mine you know and and me and Lorna really gave up on that like you know, like we, we used to, you know, tell multiple people like, oh, we have like many, many businesses. But it's like there's no point in telling people that if the businesses aren't running well or if they're you're, you're not all in on them and you're not sharing them with people. Like the reality is, is like, yeah, we, we made a lot of mistakes with the supplement company. And sure, people are using the products and the product is good. That doesn't mean, though that it was built the right way or that it benefits us in the way that we need right yeah like even our processing payment uh, payment processor it was like it was like costing us like so much every single month and we didn't recognize that there was like different payment processors until like literally just like a month or two ago and like we were spending so much money every single month just to like like this pay it was like to just, to, 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 just to take payments like it wasn't like it was getting like clients faster shipping or it was just to take payments and we were paying so much and we finally found a company um that was able to do it for us for for a different rate you know and it's like it's just like learning all these things right yeah absolutely so so you know in in my eyes although we have to now make decisions with where we are and that's okay like sometimes you've made decisions and where you are now is is where you're gonna have to make your decisions from you can't look in the past and you know a uh, like even you were saying yesterday, right? Like we can kick ourselves in the butt and say, oh, we would have done it differently. But the reality is, is we're here now. So we have to make decisions based off of where we are now. And this is where like the, the, the speed comes into play, right? One thing that you and I have always taken um, a good benefit is, is like when we see the opportunity to change something for the better or to make decisions on, on somewhere that's going to move us forward, we don't wait six months like you can't wait six months you can't wait a year because your circumstances will change and sometimes it won't change for the better right yeah. and some of these decisions we made even with the supplements like 
you know, now they're totally different than the decisions we would have made three months ago. Yeah, and I mean, like, if we, you know, were in 2020 and we're like, oh, maybe we should start a supplement company. Okay, like, let me take some time to figure out if it's going to be a good idea. Like, it would have been 2023 and we wouldn't have started anything. And, like, yeah, it maybe have saved us money. But, like, the way that we always do things is, like, we just take action. We just do it. And then we, like, course correct. Like, you, you only get better. You only learn. Like, I see, like even all of our businesses, right? It's like, we've just learned so much. And this goes for any of you guys listening. It's like, I think there's a lot of times it's like, I'm so scared to join something or I'm so scared to hire a coach or I'm so scared to join a program because what if I fail? But like spending all that time doubting, wondering, wishing, I don't know, could literally be time where you are actually just making progress right now, right? So it's like for us, like when we started the supplement company, it's like we didn't really know what the heck we were doing, but we're like, okay, like let's just start it. And then you just learn as you as you go along and you and you trust yourself and you just commit that this is what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in the end, when we were looking at the numbers too, it really was no different than working with the affiliate company and that was the ironic part is you know someone had a tried and true method that had already worked and been developed and that's you know it it would probably would have been the way that we would have gone had we have known all this information right but this is why like we have meetings and like even for you guys like even if you have like a partner or whatever like having these like team meetings or like partner meetings I think is really important to like actually like reflect like you know even for our personal we'll do like sit down personal finances like you know where are we spending our money what what's a priority for us like because that's how you get like ahead in life right it's like you reflect like what's been going well what's not been going well um and then I think sometimes want people want to like avoid those conversations but like that's where you can actually see like how things are going like you know so yeah you know it's it's funny you say that because we we've always been willing and open but like sometimes like well you know we'll watch like love is blind and stuff and and we're watching these people who can't get around like really four core conversations which i think is so huge right there's the money convo because people don't like because look sometimes maybe you look at the numbers and you're like oh man these numbers suck but like you know it's just also like you know it's the money convo which i think is number one the second thing is the sex convo maybe you know you're not quite liking what your partner's doing or maybe you want to try something but you're too scared to say to your partner so you never say anything and then so you just slowly stop having sex and then that's also not good right and then the third conversation is really like the health and self conversation like each person Lorna has goals I have goals like you know or Japan going to to next year that's really for me like Lorna is like hey I would love to go with you I'm sure, I I'm sure am not, not loving to go with you but I will go with you <laughs> right like uh, you know I go to school by myself if you want right <laughs> but it, it's like you guys I'm so excited for Nintendo yeah Nintendo world Nintendo. that's why I'm going to Japan okay yes yeah, so but it's like we have these these goals that that we're doing that we have to stop and communicate with someone and yeah guess what sometimes those conversations are are hard but ultimately if the other person supports you right then it's it's not going to matter right and truthfully if you think about it even when working with a coach why do we work with a coach we work with a coach because we want someone to tell us the things that are really hard to hear sometimes like it's going to be okay you can do it you're on the right path you need to be consistent you're not showing up for yourself these are all things that other people tell you that sometimes is way too hard to hear from a partner or is the partner's not the right person to say it so ultimately like you know if you're not having those conversations like you really should sit down and start to have them in in smaller ways you know pick one that that yeah that you haven't done and and I mean don't go through your entire life in one sitting I'm sure that'll that'll be a lot but maybe start with the finances and go somewhere else yeah I think those honestly like our little meetings have been so helpful and it's like it's important to do them regularly like you know because I think even like sometimes Andrew and I we would find ourselves like you know and we're still we still have to kind of work on this but like just kind of like hey what do you think about this and it's like a Tuesday afternoon you know what I mean? Versus like, hey, like let's let's save all the, the conversation for like, you know, a, a team meeting, right? Because it just, it just saves everyone time. Um, 
but yeah, so I mean, this has been 40, like 44, 40, 44 minutes. Yeah. So I think this is good. I know this has been kind of like all over the place. Um, but I think this is like a really good conversation, you know, like we've talked about a lot of like good things. I think you guys can like go and implement like a partner meeting, um, you know, um, like different perspectives in terms of like hiring coaches, um, like asking for support. We've kind of talked about like quite a few things. Yeah. And, and ultimately as well, like not like setting down the ego and the pride to actually say like, you know, is it going to be faster, better and make more sense if I work with someone or have someone do it as opposed to you always lone wolfing it like lone wolfing it doesn't make sense and there's this amazing quote if you if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together and that's because people are really what make up the center of growth change development you know no one does anything alone and you shouldn't either I mean well even think about like Amazon right like it's not one person like there's like millions of people that work at freaking Amazon. Like in order for that business to like work so well and so efficiently is like he's gotten help and like there's there's employees and there's team members and like everyone has to like work together, right? In order for it to work properly, right? So Jeff, Jeff Bezos isn't isn't uh, shipping your packages. Like yeah. sorry, he's too busy for <laughs> yeah. for that. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for listening, you guys. And by the way, we're filming this on Canadian Thanksgiving. Like I said, we're going to Andrew's parents' house and we're just so thankful for you guys of like listening to this podcast, listening to whether it's my podcast, Andrew's podcast. And by the way, if you're listening to my podcast and if you've not yet checked out Andrew's podcast, it's the Hormone Helper podcast. And if you are listening to this on Andrew's podcast, come hang out with me on the Ditch Decade Diets podcast. And we just have a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for listening. And hopefully this actually uploads and hopefully the audio is not too bad. (laughs) Yes. Thanks guys for listening. Bye. (laughs) Well, it seems I'm all out of info juice for today. That's all for this episode. And thank you so much for listening. Please leave a raving review for me if you've learned something good. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Now, if you're in the mood for some more great content and tools to get your hormones on track, why not check out our free Facebook group and the blog on our site? We do amazing weekly trainings in our group that me and my wife call Tea and Teachings that give good tips for anything hormones and metabolism related. It's also a great community where you get to share your goals and success with like-minded people just like you. I'll make sure to drop both the Facebook group link and the blog link in the show notes for you. Or if you're ambitious like me, the name of the group is Weight Loss and Balanced Hormones. Uh, It'll say Fit for All beside it with a picture of me. So come and join us and have more fun.